Wonderlands of course has many legendaries you can already get early on as world drops if the odds are in your favor or as dedicated drops from farming certain bosses. We already found quite a lot of these special items like a spell that shoots barrels, a special Warcraft pickaxe and way way more that I want to run down in this video. I want to thank 2k for sponsoring the video. Check out Tiny Tina's Wonderlands via the link in the video description. And now let's look at some awesome legendaries. But first, it's good to quickly touch on the luck stat, which is super important in Wonderlands. You can view it at any time in the skill menu and then by going to the hero stats. Leveling up is the easiest way to increase the base luck stat and it actually increases by quite a lot the higher your level is then you also have the lucky dices and those increase your loot luck multiplier and this increases based on the amount of lucky dice you find in the game now if you go crazy and find all the 260 dices then you get extra loot luck 35 percent there are also amulets with luck bonuses, the end game chaos levels increase your luck and also the myth ranks which unlock at level 40 can increase your loot luck. So good to keep that in mind when farming bosses. Although even on a low level with not a lot of luck you can still have legendaries drop like when I was farming the early main story Sambos boss which you can repeat at any time by going back to the Shatter Grave region from the world map and then picking this fast travel spot over here. Be careful of the traps and you can just run past the enemies until you reach the vending machines and then drop down so you can fight this boss again. And good to keep in mind by the way that you have to progress the main story for the boss to respawn. So complete the mission that the boss was a part of and then you can do this tactic. And then of course when the boss is dead just go back to the main menu continue and then you will drop before the spawn point of the boss and they can farm the boss again i mostly did this for the xp which is very nice and skills with your level it's kind of insane and then if you're lucky you can see the undead pact of hill drop which i think is the dedicated drop for this boss but of course correct me if i'm wrong in the comments down below it's a pretty nice offensive shield namely when it depletes it will send out these skulls that go to nearby enemies and deal poison damage so it's actually pretty decent to nuke the armor from the son boss but it can also deal nice damage to other enemies. It's pretty cool to have these skills appear when you're already casting some skills and spells. So it's totally not the best shield by any stretch of the imagination. But it can deal some nice extra damage when you get in a tough situation. Where and I say the shield all the time but it's called of course ward in this game. Goes down. It reminds me of the skills from the Bully Harvest event from Borderlands 3. So yeah, they're present now in Wonderlands too. A better shield is one you can get from the first boss in the game by returning to the Snoring Valley area. I mentioned this in my previous video as well, but you can go back at any time, run past all the enemies. Don't forget that amazing Frost SMG that always spawns in the chest when you enter the castle. It's always on your current level and it wrecks. I mentioned this also in my previous video, which I will link to by the way at the end of this one. So they can, at the end of this level, fight the first boss again. Again, and if you are lucky, you can get the Cursed Wit of Echoes, which gives you a 17% damage reduction and a 100% increased damage dealt to nearby enemies when your shield depletes. So even on a low level, again, you can farm this boss very early on. You can have these insane benefits throughout the rest of the game, which is kind of crazy. I already figured out a cool build in combination with the insane Buff Meister spell. I'm rocking the spell shield myself. But I want to go more in depth on that in a future video. And I by the way got that legendary spell from a skeleton chest. Which is another source for early legendaries. You can of course find this chest in Bridehoof. And you need a shift key in order to open it. So I already shared one in my previous video. And they actually dropped another one since then. But this one expires a little earlier. March 28th. I will also drop them in the video description. And we'll, by the way, keep that up to date as well. So if new keys are added, I will update the video description for if you watch the video later. If you got a key, they can claim them by going to social, then to the shift section of the game. They can enter them there if you are on console or you have to go to a website if you are on PC. 
go back into the game and then you will see that you got a skeleton key in the mail. Now if you use them on the chest you can get lucky like me and get legendaries but it's not guaranteed like it's a high chance actually that you only get purple items which is still very nice because they all drop on your current level. So yeah let's go over more amazing legendary items you can already find early if you are lucky of course if you enjoyed the video so far then leaving a like on it would really help me out and a subscribe because we got way more Wonderlands content coming your way. Then as who also works full time for the channel has also been getting very lucky with a ton of legendaries he will showcase them now to you. Thanks Jordan I'm not gonna lie I'm a bit jealous of some of the things you found but I've gotten pretty lucky with some loot drops as well like with this goblin pickaxe for example which dropped from the banshee boss this is a story related fight in the weep wild dankness which you can come back to later to repeat and farm it and real quick and that's why i'm jumping in here because we just figured this out but it seems that the mount craw obelisk is the dedicated drop source for this so if you want to get it you can repeat this also by quitting to the main menu and then doing it over and over again the red text on the weapon might be familiar to people who played world of warcraft time is money friend a fitting goblin quote for this goblin pickaxe this legendary melee weapon spawns a bit of money every time you hit an enemy. It's only a little bit, every hit spawns two bags that each grant you one gold and sadly increasing the difficulty to intense which should increase money drops does not increase this amount. But money also feeds into the second part of this weapon's perk. Which is a stacking buff that triggers every time you pick up money and increases your movement speed, spell cooldown and action skill cooldown rate by 6%. It also stacks up to 5 times. So combining those two together you can cast your spells, use your ability and then start hitting enemies in order to reduce the cooldown on those abilities while also getting extra movement speed in the process. At full stacks this translates to 30% increase to all three stats but the downside is that it only lasts for five seconds so you have to keep collecting money in order to keep the buff running. Also a bit unfortunate but only your skill buffs are shown under your XP bar so not the stacking buff from this weapon which makes it hard to track how many stacks you currently have. Still it's a very impactful buff though and it also encourages a really fun playstyle where I found myself rarely using my gun because of how low all my cooldowns were. Another item I found that reinforced a different but very fun playstyle was this war, the Spirit Rune of Security. It dropped from Vorkanar, the boss at the end of the Goblin side quest at Mount Crawl, which is the first optional area you can visit. It has a special rune effect on it that gives you a 20% lightning damage buff and instant ward regeneration as long as you stand still. So while normally after getting hit you have to wait a bit before your shield starts regenerating, with this spirit rune it will instantly regenerate as long as you are standing still. Even if you get hit while moving, as soon as you stop your ward regen will kick in instantly. So paired with the buff to lightning damage and a nice shock weapon, you can basically turn yourself into an almost invincible turret. Sure, you might still get taken out by an explosion or a high damage attack from a boss, but most enemies will not be able to out damage your shield regen, so as long as you're standing still, you're probably not getting killed. The most interesting part of the shield is however the fact that it is inscribed. What this means, as you can see here on the item card, is that unique rune abilities are shared across all players equipped with a rune ward. So that means that there must be more of these legendary spirit rune wards each with their own unique rune buff and having multiple ones equipped while playing in co-op will share the buff between you and your friends. So if I'm wearing this spirit rune of security everyone else with a rune shield will also have an instant ward regen and extra lightning damage when they stand still. This is a really interesting mechanic and it really has me curious what the other rune wards might do so let us know if you found one in the comments below. And while theory crafting about interesting builds is nice and all sometimes you just want to have some simple fun and throw a barrel at someone. And the barrel maker spell lets you do just that. This one also dropped from Vorkanar for me and it does pretty much exactly what you think it does. It spawns an explosive barrel, like the ones you find in many of the combat arenas, and shoots it from your hand. The version I found shoots shock barrels, not sure if there are other elemental variants as well, and it also has two charges, which allows you to shoot even more barrels. You can either let a barrel impact directly with an enemy or bounce them along the ground if you want to. And I have to be honest here, I'm using the spell mostly for the fun factor. Shooting barrels from your hand that appear out of thin air is just the kind of crazy that makes a game like this fun, but it's definitely not the most powerful spell, even even though it's legendary. Something like the Meteor Dropping Calamity spell will deal more damage and I also find those a lot easier to hit. But with this I can shoot barrels whenever I want at whoever I want so I'm really not complaining. And then the final legendary I found so far was a legendary piece of armor, the Ranger's Ward Paradigm, which also dropped from the Banshee. 
Now, in case you didn't know, armors have a similar function to class mods, so they boost some of your skills as well as offer some nice passive bonuses. The ward paradigm I found was made for the Berserker Spore Warden multi-class combo, which is exactly what I'm running, so I got really lucky there. Not sure yet if a ward paradigm can drop with buffs for other classes as well, or that this one is specific to the Spore Warden Berserker multi-class. Next to boosting some class skills, this set of armor also has a really interesting, unique effect. It increases both your spell damage and melee damage by 50% of your ability damage. Which is perfect, especially for a Spore Warden, as that class can further buff their ability power by investing in the Affinity skill. And then, with this armor equipped, all your spells and melee attacks will deal a lot more damage. I tried it out with a Morning Star and saw my damage increase from 110 to 129 per hit. And while the damage with spells was a bit less consistent, I definitely noticed some higher numbers on the damage with this legendary armor equipped. So, a really nice passive boost to two of your main sources of damage, and the buff only gets stronger as you grow stronger. Plus, armor of course also slightly changes the look of your character and this one looks pretty badass in my opinion. So, extra damage, extra boost in my skills and a really nice look to them as well. Safe to say, I really like this item. And that's all the legendaries we found so far. Of course, leave a like if you liked the video. Remember to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next Wonderlands video because we have way more coming up and if you want, you can watch our previous Wonderlands video by clicking on the screen. Thanks everyone so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!